Hi everyone, welcome to part two of the tutorial series. So remember that I cannot toggle back and forth, so you you can only see the internet version. So there will be um, a tutorial part three and actually four as well. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But anyway, so I'm going to show you how to do your research. Okay, now you will remember that my thesis statement relates to the COVID-19 crisis in regards to the environment. So my thesis says COVID-19 has caused the world great strife and stress. However, this global pandemic has come at a time when the environment desperately needed a break and the COVID-19 global pandemic is significantly helping humanity. So with my thesis, I am trying to prove that there are positive effects. Uh, from the COVID-19 in regards to the, to the environment, and that um, these positive effects will positively affect humanity, okay? So I need to prove my point, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to do some research. I'm not going to take you through like a full research, obviously. What I'm going to just do is help you to kind of see what I'm talking about from the last lesson when I'm talking about, um, you know, search engine optimization and um, how to find that information uh, and also is it credible, reliable, you know, all that stuff. So let's go through that. And then in the third tutorial, I'll show you um, what the citation page looks like, so on and so forth. And I'll also give you some references for um, citation generators that you can use. All right, so let's get started. So that's my thesis, okay? And one of my research questions is um, what improvements to the climate, what improvements to the climate have actually been made and why? Don't forget, I also need to research for my counter argument. For my topic, it's a very new topic. So for me, I would have had to, and I've already, I've already done that, obviously, um, I would have had to research my counter argument before, um, you know, I, I, I find any citations for that. Now, if you have an argument that's more established, um, it's not something that's new, then one of two things, um, you will probably be able to find that counter argument very easily, um, or two, you already know the counter argument. You can guess it. You know, so that's easy. Um, in my case, the counter argument um, for positive effects is that most people are saying that, yes, there are positive effects on the environment. Um, that is that that can be found with scientific and empirical evidence. So no one, I won't say no one, but um, these critics are not denying that. But they're saying that the positive effects on the climate right now because of COVID-19 is not enough to reverse all of the damage that has been done um, from humanity. It's, it's just not enough. When we go back to business as usual, we're going to go back to the same, uh, the same thing. We're just going to go back to all the same wasteful practices and uh, poor environmental pr protection that we did before. And so they're saying that this is not enough. Also that, um, this can increase waste just in other forms. So online shopping has increased. Obviously medical equipment will have increased. I'm talking about the waste. Um, hazardous materials are obviously gonna increase. So there's still waste and there's still gonna be an issue with climate change. True, got that. But what I'm going to uh, refute is to say that even though um, it's not enough, it's something that um, it could help us change the human psychology of current times, of modern times, from wasteful to maybe more resourceful. Um, because right now, it's you know, for a lot of people in the world, we're spoiled. We don't really have to do without. So that's a problem. So help. So hopefully, this can help to change human psychology. So I'll talk more about how to um, to contradict or, or to refute a 
counter argument, but right now we're just focusing on the research. So now that you kind of understand more about my research, let's get into it. So when I talked about search engine optimization in the last lesson, you don't have to um, know all the technicalities of that. All I was trying to say is that be more specific in your search. Okay, so if I just type in, okay, let's just give a poor example. I know that my topic is climate change, right? And the effects, the positive effects on the environment because of COVID-19. But if I just type in COVID-19, guys, Okay, I'm not going to get, look how many search results that I have. My goodness. I mean, you're going to get a lot anyway, but come on. Okay, so I'm just getting a lot of information that is really not relevant here because I wasn't specific. Or if I type in, um, how is climate change uh, improving? now okay can, can you see here we don't have remember i told you that the first page and the first few results are going to be the best right there's not a lot of specific information here okay so now let me make my search a little bit more specific and say uh climate change and covid19 Okay, so it's it's definitely better. I can see some of my counter argument here. Sorry, climate change hasn't gone away because of COVID nineteen. So, um, so these people are going to say that nope, no way, it hasn't gone away completely. Um, some of them might say, like I already told you, it's better, but it's not good enough. But I really want to focus on my topic which i'm trying to find the positive effects effects yeah effects sorry i'm trying to find all the positive effects so let's make my keywords a little more specific so it's okay for you to type in a, a whole long sentence into google like you don't have to type in like two three four words you can type in a whole sentence if you want to it's going to be better actually makes it more specific. So let's say positive effects on climate change due to COVID-19. Ah, okay, look, look what I've got here. I've got a UN article, okay? And we can tell that this is also gonna be a counter argument. This EP online looks good. You got weform.org. And another note about when you do search for credibility, um, we're going to check one of our websites for credibility. Look for .org. Okay. Uh, .org is really good because organizations have to go through stricter guidelines in order to get that. Um, I forgot what they call it. Uh, the ends here. Okay. Of the URL. Com is fine, I mean, but com is commercial. Anybody can get .com for the domain name. So um, you have to be extra careful. Not to say that all orgs are good. I'm just saying that in, in general, it's going to be better. But, I mean, of course, you know credible sources like news sites. Even with news sites, some of them are biased. Um, so don't take all of your information from one website. Like, for those of you, maybe you like Al Jazeera, don't get all of your news articles from Al Jazeera. Um, you need to diversify because even news sites can be um, biased. Okay, so we have a lot of conservation. Great, we have some great sources. Now, don't just stick with the first page. Look at the second page. And these are still good because I typed in a more specific um, a keyword list, I guess you can call it sentence, pretty much. So that's that's my version of SEO, a search engine optimization. Just be more specific with your search, okay? Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, even the third page, we still have good sources, right? Okay, so let's just choose one. I'm going to go back to the first page. And I want to focus on positive effects. So even though I, I want to look at this one too, but let's focus on, let's go to EP online. And by the way, I'm using um, Internet Explorer for personal privacy reasons. But of course, if you use Google Chrome, you know, it doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, um, so we're here on this website. It looks busy, but that's okay. Don't don't always go by what it looks like. So we have now. First, we're going to check check the um, the source itself because we want to see is it possibly credible. So it looks like a professionally written website. We have custom search within. We have contact us, subscribe. That's a good sign. The name is pretty good. Environmental protection. Okay, you guys, a lot of times that there there are ads on these websites and stuff like that, and I have no idea what's going to come up, so do excuse me. Uh, let's see. So we have title, no author, which is okay. That's not a that's not a big deal. Um, at the bottom, we have a lot of ways to contact them and to check them out. So that's really good. That's a good sign. Okay, that means they're not ashamed of themselves. They're, they're probably a credible source. Um, we have a discussion. That's good. That means they're open to um, criticism. That's a good sign. Let's see. Oh, even better. At the bottom, we have um, sponsors and magazines that they've been published in, which is very important. We have contact. Okay. Great. We have quick links, terms of use, privacy policy. They have a variety of topics. They have products. So this is looking pretty good. I'm going to, oh, oh, we have a trademark sign. I'm going to go with that. These people can be trusted, at least as a credible source. So now we would need to go and read the article, of course. Once you find out that it's credible, don't waste your time if it's not. So once you find out, okay, this is reliable, then read it and see if this is something that you can use to help expand your knowledge if you're writing a bibliography or if it's something that you want to cite. Okay, so COVID-19 and climate change, the unexpected pairing, the worldwide pandemic, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, I've looked at this article before, so and I'm going to tell you it's fine. Okay, and we have multiple pages. Great. All right, let's go to... We have a fourth page here. Page four four. That's a that's a nice thorough article, guys. All right. So now at this point, let's say you said, okay, I want to use this as a source. Great. Now what you need to do is you need to record the information. Okay. So you can do this and. Many ways. Um, I would not suggest taking pictures because it's just going to be all, all over the place. I suggest doing it the old school way and writing down the information or the new school way, which I do, and I can't show you yet to the next tutorial. Um, you'll want to copy and paste this information and put it on your Works Cited page so that you can use it later. Okay? So for me, I've done both. I've written it down and I've copied and pasted it for you for tutorial purposes okay so write down the title name that's very important if there was an author or authors you would write down the author's or author's name or name in this case there's no author and that's still fine okay the name of the publication is environmental protection actually i think on my document i wrote environment protection so I have to fix that yeah, I have my notes here, environmental protection. Okay, um, what else we would need to write down? Uh, the date of the article, so March 24th, 2020, and the date is relevant, so that's good. You know, be careful with um, with work that is very old. 
because, you know, times change, especially now with technology, things change rapidly. So you want to use um, information that's that's current. In this case, I have no choice because this is, <laughs> this is obviously new. Um, but if I were writing about an older topic, then obviously I would want um, to make sure that my my information is relevant. And so my date has to be relevant as well. Okay, so let's see, what else should we write down? Um, even though it's called environmental protection, it's this is EP online, so I'm going to write down EP online. I could use this as my um, author, so to speak, as a corporate author. Okay, so an organization is the author, so I can write that down. Let's see. I don't think I need a section, but back in the day I would have to write a section. But this is fine as it is. And of course you would need the link. So for those of you who are very new to this and you think that it's okay to copy and paste, you can't do that. Um, you know, unless you're copy and pasting a, a short quote, because for your essay you don't need long quotes. That's not acceptable. Um, then, of course, you can copy and paste, but you have to cite your source. So, you have to give me the link. If you don't, that's unacceptable for any electronic source. You have to give the link so that, and the correct link so that I can check it. Um, so if any of you like to copy and paste or plagiarize, this is a bad time for you because your arguments with essay, you cannot do that because I have proof. By the way, on Moodle, if you copy anything, whether you cite it or not, I can see it because um, turnitin.com through Moodle is how, I, um, how I'm able to assess whether you cheated or not. And that does not mean that you can submit your essay in any other way. I could care less if you say that Moodle is down. You will have to submit it through Moodle com. I will not accept it any other way. I think I mentioned that before because um, you're not going to go around um, the uh, cheating thing. I have other ways to check, but you're, you're not going to go around that. So you have to do it through Moodle, by the way. So you have to record the link. So this is why I had to, you know, write it down sometimes. It, it just depended. If I was working from the university and it wasn't my own computer, I'd have to write down the link or email it to myself. You can do that. Or if you're on the computer that you're going to write everything on, just copy and paste the link here. And then you got it. No big deal. Okay, so record all of that information, as much information as you can. You should also record um, the location of the organization. So here, it's, it's, you're, you're usually going to find it at the, bot, at the bottom, or you can go up to, like, contact us on websites, and they'll have the information. Okay, and so we know Dallas, Texas, so I'm going to write that down. Okay. Awesome. So that's my source. Now, let's go to the other one. Great. Here's my other source. Um, United Nations. I mean, how, <laughs> how much more legit can you get? So this one is an obvious legitimate source, but still, I mean, you can look at everything. We know it's UN News, and we can write that down, okay, when we get to that point. We can write that down. Again, we have no author, but that's okay. We can say UN News is the organization author. Okay, so climate change, greenhouse gas emissions are down, and air quality has gone up as governments react to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the head of the UN Environmental Program Unit, Inger Anderson, has cautioned against viewing this as a boon for the environment, like a good thing. Uh, in this first-person editorial, Ms. Anderson calls instead for a profound systemic shift, blah, 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 blah. Okay? So this is an opinion that I think I might want to consider. Okay? I think so. Let's have a look. And we can see all the social media uh, widgets on the side, but it's UN, so we know it's we know it's legit. We just want to see do we want to use it. Okay, for this example, the example is yes. Of course, I mean the answer is yes. Um, of course, you need to read it. 
all when you're when you're doing research, but for this purpose, um, this, this is fine. Okay, so what should we do? We should write down the information or copy and paste it into another document. So we have the title. There's no author, but we can put down UN News. Maybe that can be our organization author. And then the actual organization itself is United Nations. So let's write that down. Um, of course, you need the website link. I mean, the, the article link. So don't put like, don't use the organization's um, website link. Don't put like UN.org. Never do that. You have to give me the exact functioning link, no broken link, to the article itself. So in this case, you would need to copy and paste all of that. I don't care if the link is all the way this length and down beyond. You need to copy and paste that entire link and put it into your citation. Okay, um, we have the date is April 5th. And as far as I know, United Nations is in New York, New York. So I'm just going to say New York, New York. Okay, great. That, that one's easy. But if you really needed to search, you can go to contact us or you can go around the website to try to find out. Um, but you need to find that correct information. And if you can't find it on the website, you can also go to Google and type in uh, where is the headquarters for the UN. And it'll pop up. Usually it's the first thing that pops up. So brilliant. So now we've got two sources and we're going to go with that. Now the next question I need to answer for you is, okay, I've got my sources. Of course, you will have more than two guys, but this is just for an example and also for your future assignment, hint, hint, um, which you'll need to do. You just need two. But anyway, um, so what's the next step? Okay, now I need to put it in MLA format. Math, I don't know what to do. That's okay. You guys have the internet. You didn't have to buy the handbook and, and flip through the pages like I had to do. Yes, I'm a little bit of Okay. You can go to Google or whatever um, Google, uh, excuse me, search engine that you use, and you can type in MLA uh, format or citation generator. Yeah, you can use machine too, but it's not a machine. Okay, you saw what came up, right, for free and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to have a bunch of different websites that, that comes up. Too many. Of course, the first page is going to be the best, especially for this. It's going to be the best. The problem with some of these websites is either they charge you, they're out of date, or there's so many ads on there, it's just so distracting. And you can risk, like, maybe a virus or something. But there's a website that is really good and it happens to be on the first page. I do have an account with them, but you don't have to. Scribber.com. Okay. So I recommend this website. But there's another one that is pretty decent. Um citationmachine.net is one of the most popular. You can use it. Uh go for it if you want to. And where's another one? Bibme.org. Let's see. I don't know what kind of ads are going to come up, so sorry in advance. Hopefully nothing crazy comes up. Tax Act. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Oh, boy. What is this now? Okay, so anyway, um, these are the different types of sources, right? And for every different type of source, you have to have a different format. So let's just click on journal. Okay, so a journal is usually more academic. You're not going to get any crap from journals, right? So um, you can just search the title here and um, it'll give you the citation, but I caution you from doing that because it's not going to take all of the information for you and put it in the citation and you risk doing an incorrect one. And trust me, I know, so don't try it. So, but if you're in a pinch and that's the best that you can do, or your professor doesn't really care about how specific it is, so I just have to make sure I check my mic all the time. Uh, anyway, then you can go and do that, fine. But you need to go to manual entry mode 
for me especially, and you need to type it in. Notice that we're on MLA, not the other one. So it matters. Like, is it in print? So is it a hard copy? Is it online? Or is it an online database? So online database is like, for example, let's say Anisha has um, library resources that students, specifically Anisha students, can use through Zagile. So then you would use this uh, format. And then we have online. You just found it on your own, like scholar.google.com. Okay, or in print is a hard copy. Most of you are going to use online sources. Um, for those of you uh, who don't have access, I doubt that the library is open. Um, you're going to have to ask maybe your friend to to help you out with that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I am sorry, but we have to continue as usual, even though usual is not usual. Um, so hopefully you have somebody in your in your family or some some friends that can help support you. Okay, so this is this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have different source styles, and you have different formats for each one, and you have different formats within each one depending on is it hard copy or is it online, is it electronic. Okay, so you can use that one, but I don't particularly care too much for that one. Too many ads and crazy mess. Let's go to Scribber. So here it'll take you directly there, but I'm going to type in the website. I'll do it there. Um, www.scribber.com, yeah. I think. Yes. Okay, so this is the home page. So when you get to this home page, unless you click from here, it'll take you directly to MLA. But from the website homepage, you go to Citation Generator, and we are doing MLA because for your majors, that's the most relevant. I think I've said that before. Okay, so as you can see, I'm not logged in, so you can use the service for free. Okay? So now, we've got our sources, and I've written them down or copied and pasted them. Um, but because I can't toggle, I'm going to um, type everything in. But for the website links, I can copy and paste it because I have it open here. So it's no big deal. So now we're going to um, we're going to do one for example purposes. I'm going to choose environmental protection. Okay, so we're going to cite this one. So we can tell that it's definitely an online source, but is it a magazine? No. Um, let's look at the different types. Is it a book? Is it a journal article? Is it a word in a dictionary? Let's look at the others so you can see. Encyclopedia, online video. So it's none of those, but it's a newspaper, right? I'm going to go with the newspaper. It's a newspaper article. So when we click on newspaper article, it's going to ask us what's the format, printed or online. We're going to use online. As you can see here, again, you can type in the URL and it'll give you the citation. Like I said, I caution you from that because they're not always going to include all of the information. So we're going to type it in. Well, I, I'm going to type it in. Okay. So they do everything for you. So you just type it in. Um, as you can see, they give you all the details here. Guys, I'm not paid by them to promote this website, just FYI. Okay, so you don't have to type in the quotation marks here. They'll do it for you. So let's see, the article is called COVID-19 and Climate Change. Um, the unexpected pairing. Okay. Oh, sorry. By habit. Uh, the name of the newspaper, we're going to say environmental protection. That's the name of it. Uh, we found the city and state, so we're going to say Dallas, and I'm going to spell it out, Texas. You should spell it out. 
Okay, so we don't have an actual author, but in this case, we can just use the organization. And because they have a separate name, I'm going to use that EP online. Okay, since they are print and online. So I'm going to use EP online. Sure. The publication date. Okay. So usually you would use like, um, the publication date of the actual newspaper, or in this case, the article itself. So remember that it was the 24th um, of March, obviously 2020. And then URL, in this case, I can just copy and paste it. So if you have a bunch of different sources, um, having all these tabs up might be really frustrating and confusing, which is why I say, copy and paste the information in a different document. But if you are doing it as you go, like you know you're going to use that source, so you just go ahead and do the citation, I highly recommend that. So you guys can just go ahead and use this website and, hey, life is easy. Look, I'm not logged in, but for this website, it's free. You can create an account if you want to save your sources or you want to use some of their other sources. Go for it. Um, use some of the other services. Sorry, I've been talking all day. Okay, so as you can see, this is exactly as it should be. Okay, like I showed you um, in the example in the lesson. So EP Online is going to be our author. So we have an organization author in this case. If we actually had a person, the person's last name and first name would be there. For this website, you can just click to copy. In most generators, you can do the same. You can click to copy it, and then it'll be copied, and then you can paste it wherever you need to paste it. And then there's another part um, that I want to show you, but I'm going to go into more detail about that in another, tu <clears throat> another tutorial. Okay, so this is what it is. This is it. And in the next tutorial, you're going to see the first part. You're going to see how it looks on the document. Now, on this website, you can go to the bottom of the page, whether it's the, through the previous page or whatever page you go on, you can go to the bottom and it will give you a quick guide. This is the handbook. Um, a lot of times professors will make you buy the handbook because they want you to actually study it. And most of the most correct information is only printed I shouldn't say that. All of the information is printed in the handbook. Um, and so that is like the number one source. But websites, some websites are very good in, in giving you those details for free. Um, you guys have the privilege of using uh, online sources. So it gives you just a quick guide for um, in-text citations, which we'll talk more about um, in another tutorial, and works cited page. Okay. So remember, works cited is um, different from bibliography, but you can use either for for my paper. Okay, so if you look here, it'll give you um, the details as to what you should cite. So in general, when you are going through sources, this is the information you should be gathering: author, the title, um, who's the organization or who's the publisher, um, and of course the link. At least if you if you copy and paste the link somewhere, you can always go back and find the information later if you want to. They'll always ask you about locations and so on and so forth, like where are their headquarters for this organization. Okay, and um, so here's an example here, another example. And they they break it down for you. Okay, so this is a good resource. You should be familiar with um, some of the styles, especially for electronic sources, you should be familiar with it because let's say the internet goes down and you have to get a paper done. You should be able to do your citation page without going to a generator, to be honest with you. I mean, life happens. Okay, now another part that I'm going to explain in more detail in another tutorial is in text citations. And the reason I'm going to give you another tutorial about that is because I don't want to cram everything into one and confuse you. Um, and I want to also give you a tutorial on this as well. Um, as you can see, 
it's very simple. So at the end of a, of a sentence or a paragraph or, or a quote or whatever, um, you have to cite the source, and that's internal. And all you do is you put the author's name and or page numbers, right? So in this case, we have the author Wallace, and this source has page numbers. So whatever pages or page you reference for that information, you put it within the parentheses. And then the period comes at the end. Yes, I need to mention that. The period comes at the end. Um, if there is no, uh, excuse me, are there, there is or there are no page numbers, then you just put the author's last name. That's it. Okay? If there's no author, then you put the, um, the name of the, the article. Okay, and you can shorten it if it's more than four words. Okay, so they answer a lot of the questions that you know you'll have, um, especially when you're getting into this. Um, they answer all those questions without having to handle. So this website, I really recommend it, guys. They show you a little bit more about how to do this. So I'm gonna tell you guys, you know, refer to online and use this website. I'm going to refer. Uh, to this website for some of you, okay? Great. All right, so that is the citation um, part of it. And then you just copy and paste the citation into your, your paper, the last page, and that's it. And um, you, of course, make sure that all of your sources are in alphabet alphabetical order, which I'll show you in the next tutorial. The next tutorial will be super brief because um, I just can't toggle screens, so I'll just show you, show you in, in brief what it looks like and maybe some other details, and that's it. And then the fourth tutorial, I'll tell you about internal um, citation, which hopefully that'll be a short tutorial as well because there's really not too much to it, but I do want to explain some um, parts of it. All right, guys, so hopefully that was clear and concise for you. Hopefully you feel a little bit more confident about um, doing research and then citing your sources. Um, it is never acceptable for you to copy and paste links and just list them in your document. Like those days are over. Like you can't do that anymore, I'm sorry. Um, for me and for other professors, once you know, you've taken this class, there's no excuse for you. Especially because you can go to websites like these and you can just have it done for you. Like you guys are so lucky, you have no idea when you're citing 10 sources, 15 sources, <laughs> and you have to do this for every single one from your mind, you know, from scratch. It's, life was a little harder back in those times. I mean, even though I grew up with internet, um, oh, they grew up with internet. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can say grew up with internet. Um, they didn't have all the websites like they have now. All the information wasn't posted yet. It was still new. So there was no MLA uh, generator. You you had to buy the book and remember it. So uh, it's not just internet. It's just also people becoming more creative and, and savvy. Um, you will have to do this for practice soon. You will have an assignment. Um, and I'll present about that in the last part of the tutorial. Or I'll post it on uh, Facebook. I just, you guys really panic like crazy anytime, you know, I post certain things. So I don't want to overwhelm you because if I say, you know, we're doing this and this and then we have something else and you guys just get confused. So um, I'm letting you know now there is an assignment that's going to come up. It's going to be very quick. It's going to be participation. Um, you know, if you don't do it, yes, you do lose points, um, but it's not like like a test grade, I guess you can say. But I mean, participation is is a heavy weighting um, in this class, so y you really need to do it. Um, I'm going to think of the best way for you to submit this. Do I want you to do this on Moodle? Do I want you to do this real time? We'll see. But you're going to have to find at least two sources that would work well for your topic that you chose in your cause and effect outline assignment. Um, and then you would have to put them in MLA format and show me that you know what you're doing, okay? So finding two sources that are credible and then putting them in MLA format by using a website will literally take you like less than an hour, if that, maybe 
look how how long it took me. I mean, I planned this before I did the video, but still, it didn't take me long at all. Also, because I didn't have to read the whole article, but for you, you have to. Um, you should. I hope you do. And then cite the source to show me that you understand what's going on, because you have to do this for your arguments to essay. So all the pieces will come together in that final essay. Okay. Um, so that's it for today's tutorial or for this tutorial. Um, in the next one, if you care to watch it on the same day, it will be short. And I'll show you what this all looks like and comes together with. And the next one, like I said, will be focusing on internal sources, uh, excuse me, internal citations. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the argumentative essay. All right. Stay safe. Hope you're doing well. And take care, and I'll virtually see you in the next lesson slash tutorial.